joining us for another Investor Spotlight podcast. We have today's special guest, Ray Reyes of Orlando, Florida. He's been investing since 2005, guys, and has 292 units. So listen up. He has a great story to share. How are you doing today, Ray? I'm great. How about yourself? Doing well. Hanging in there. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your background and like how you got into real estate in the first place. Yeah, so I my background is I, I uh, actually was in the military for 28 years. Um, just retired uh, from the military at the end of last year, and so um, my real estate story begins somewhere in the middle, like a lot for a lot of uh, military families, where you're you're put in a position where you have an opportunity. You have to move. They're moving you somewhere, and you have an opportunity. You have a choice to make about whether you want to live on base, whether you want to live, you want to rent off base, or whether you buy, want to buy a property. And so um, I'd always been one of those folks that, that uh, you know, that, that thought real estate was a way to, to, to get ahead. Um, and I, I, I'd love to play Monopoly as a child. It was kind of like my favorite game. And so to me, it was kind of a no brainer as far as how, how I got started. You know, once I got to the tail end of my career and I, I felt like I wanted to keep doing this uh, for myself as you know in a full-time manner then I had to kind of relook and figure out how I wanted to do it because the it, uh, the single family space is, is not a bad idea it's a good idea it's a lot of ways a lot of people get started there mm -hmm. but it takes a long time to sort of build the type of passive income that that you know that people need to right. to live uh, and they get so much profit from one door yeah and so Right toward that tail end, I decided to go into multifamily, and that's kind of where I'm at today. That's awesome. And so what are some um, of the main differences that you see going into multifamily? What are the, the big benefits that you noticed? I, uh, the obvious one is, is, is a scale, the scalability that you, that you get. Um, that's kind of the, the big one, especially coming from that single family space, because you, you have to take a certain amount of actions regardless of whether uh, you're going to be going into the multifamily space or the single family space. You have to know things about the location. You have to know things about the property. You have to study uh, the property in detail, do uh, inspections. Uh, and so I think the process is the same, but the way that you can kind of take your efforts and really multiply your results by going into multifamily is if it was kind of like a no brainer, I, I wish it would have been a no brainer earlier in my career, but you know, you, you're kind of doing a bunch of things. And, and, and frankly, there's, there's not a lot of information out there about how this can be done. And so that's kind of part of what I'm trying to do is, you know, it, uh, I want to put the, the word out to people that are, you know, in the, in the position of the travel and, or they may have jobs that keep them busy. There is a way to do this without having to go and do the, the single family space. Yeah, and I think that's true. A lot of people are kind of scared when they think about multifamily. It's like a big unknown. It's like, do I, do I have to have a bunch of partners to do this? How, what are the loans like? I mean, there's, they're full of tenants. How, you know, how does that work with the property management part? It's just, there's so many unknowns. So, so for someone who wants to get into multifamily, what are the steps that they need to take? Because I think a lot of people are scared to, to go forward because they, they don't know what that looks like. They don't know what to do. Got it. And I know where I was now. Education. That's kind of the beginning of everything, right? And, and so even on a single family, you have, to, you have to get educated. And so the terminology is a little bit different. Um, I think that's one of the key things. How you, how you assess, uh, you know, the, the, the type of investments you're going to do, you have to understand the different terminology. So on a single family space, for, as an example, you, you, you value a property by what the properties around it uh, are selling for. Uh, and are actually what they sold for versus what they're selling in many cases. But on this, on the multifamily space, the, uh, the key is what your net operating income in, in the property that you're going to buy. There is some correlation with the properties around you, but not as much. The biggest correlation, uh, as it relates to what that property is worth is how much money it makes. And so that's, that's kind of one of the big things. So you have to understand those differences, but it's, but like anything else, you just have to get educated. And there's a lot of books out there that talk about these things. So what did your first multifamily deal look like? So my first one was as a limited partner, and this is kind of a way that a lot of people can get in into the multifamily space because 
you, you're able to kind of take chunks of, of, you take your education and you take chunks of risk instead of the entire risk. I think that's one of the big things is you know, like, you think you have to do everything, but you don't. There's, you know, multifamily is a, is a kind of a, just like the military, it's a kind of a team sport. You have to have other people and they all have to kind of do their pieces to it. Our, my first one, I was actually deployed. I was in, I was uh, working out of El Salvador at the time and um, I, made a decision in, in 2016 that I needed to get educated. It took me about a year, frankly, to get educated and then to find uh, a, a location that served several locations that I was comfortable investing in and then finding an opportunity uh, to do so. And so an opportunity came up. I'd actually had a chance to network with the, in this case, it's what we call a syndicator, the person who found the, the deal and has a deal under contract. Um, and, I, and I knew that person, and I, I still did my due diligence on, on that individual, but I felt comfortable enough to move forward and invest. It was a property. It was actually uh, a portfolio loan because it was two, two multifamily properties, over 100 units between the two of them uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and so I actually, I actually invested in that while I was in El Salvador. And so for those who, who may not know, um, you were a limited partner in that. What does that mean? What is a limited partner? Great question. So a limited partner is someone who, who uh, provides their funding, provides a portion of the funding towards the acquisition of a property. What makes that person a limited partner, and that's just a term, another term that is you know, among the many that you have to kind of get educated on is you, you, you don't have the responsibility for actively managing that property. You know, you have a, a co-sponsor, uh, you, you, you have co-sponsors, you have the sponsor, you have the acquisition team, uh, and all those folks are part of what's called the general partnership because they're actually actively involved in the, in the acquisition process and then the asset management process on the back end and, and the investor relations, which are the folks that are actually going to be communicating with you as a limited partner uh, throughout that, that the process of that of that business plan, which ends with the exit out of that out of that investment. And so, which is the um, you so make the money. Correct. As a limited partner, I have a share of the of the basically the profit out of that. And every deal is slightly different, but most of the time almost uh, all the time, the ones that I've been involved with, the limited partners make the bulk of the money. They're obviously putting in the bulk of the, of the, the money on the front end for that investment. Yeah, so that's a great way for people who are, are new, who don't know about multifamily, but maybe they have a nice chunk of change laying around. You don't even have to do the work. <laughs> you find a syndication deal, well, do your due diligence, of course, make sure it's a good deal for you. And then you invest, let everyone else do the, the hard work, if you will, and then you can get the return. So that is a great way. And then by doing that, did you feel like you learned a little bit more about the process? And then did you take a more active role going forward? Or um, did you just stay with the, the limited partnerships? Sure. So part of my, my, uh, my thought as I went through this uh, transition from single to multi is I kind of wanted to, to learn it. I wanted to potentially do it myself, uh, maybe at a, at a smaller scale, maybe not a huge 100 unit deal, but something, you know, where, you know, 10, 15 units kind of get out and scale up from mm -hmm. just single families. Yeah. And so, but my, my, my uh, end state in that was always to go and do it for myself uh, and learn how to do it. So Part of why I invested with that particular team was the fact that they were willing to kind of peel the onion back a little bit, or you know, and let me see some of the internals of how how they were doing things and what were some of the uh, you know the, the issues and, and things that they had to kind of work through through the, to that acquisition process, you know, throughout the acquisition process, and even after the fact, just kind of keeping me informed uh, of what was going on much more than normally you would with other limited uh, you know limited investors or passive investors where they are you know, they just want their bottom line is, you know, when am I going to get paid? Right. And so long as you're paying them that, you know, they, they, they're comfortable with just kind of leaving it be, they're busy. That's, that's the point. They don't want, they don't want to focus on that. But I, I had that in mind from the very get go that I wanted to transition. So that was kind of part of it. And so once I got back from, uh, from El Salvador back into the States, I'd made that decision at that point pretty early on in my next move that I was going to retire uh, so that I could do this full time. And I actually acquired a property while I was still on active duty where I was a general partner in it. Nice. And so mm -hmm. where are you at with things now? What's the, the current scope? Sure. I mean, so I, last year, about, uh, about summer, uh, I 
in, uh, was my, I had my first general partnership. Uh, and then earlier this year, in, uh, in January, we actually closed on our second uh, property where I was a general partner or sometimes can be called a co-sponsor. And so right now we're, we're back in acquisition mode. Obviously, we're kind of looking at, you know, where we are with the economy right now. This is obviously a, a change of events from even as early as, you know, January of this year. Now we have we had what some would consider a black swan where we've had this, you know, the coronavirus, coronavirus yeah. threat. That's everybody kind of put, for a uh, loop. <laughs> yeah, put everybody kind of in at the very least in, in a level of uncertainty. So right now. You know, just assessing. Um, the good news is, I, we, you know, if you kind of studied these things along the way, you kind of knew it was coming. Um, and if you were you were listening to some of what a lot of folks were saying, is you have you had to kind of go into an investment. Uh, you didn't know when something was going to happen. We kind of knew a correction was coming at some point, but you still invest and you do it in a way that is conservative. And a lot of people use, you know, say that and they really don't know what that means. They're just saying it because everyone else say it, says it. But the bottom line is walking away from a potential deal because it doesn't meet a criteria that you've established before you even looked at that, at that potential deal. Mm. And so if you stay with your criteria and you adjust that criteria to, to make it even harder to, to kind of uh, to put yourself in a bad position financially, then you're going to have to walk away from, the, from some deals, but the deals that you do have, you'll have a lot higher level of comfort going into any kind of period of uncertainty. Mm, absolutely. So people really need to plan ahead and, and know, maybe I'm not going to get rent for three or four months. And can I still have this investment if that happens? What does that look like? What absolutely. Planning? So you also um, do um, um, some coaching, is that correct? Yeah, so I, I had I actually always and, and I can talk about this, but you know one of one of the things that I want to do and if I, I probably already expressed it is I, I really enjoy you know sort of talking about you know how 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 I did it, what was my my path because there's a lot of people that potentially are kind of in the in the crossroads and 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 can potentially use some of this information. My goal is to be able to help particularly veterans on how to, you know, how to kind of, if, they, if this is something they want to do, to get them over that, that you know, provincial hump, to get them to, to take a decisive action towards, towards those goals. You know, you, know, you got to get over the, 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 the process of actually believing that it can be done and just do it. Sometimes you just have to take that step. And so I hope to be able to do that. So I, a lot of folks will ask me questions. I readily on my website and other places put my contact information and I would gladly get on the phone with just about anybody to talk about this. I, I love it. That's one of the reasons I'm yeah. doing it myself. You definitely have a passion for it. Yeah, you got it. I mean, you know, and after I retired, it was simple. I mean, I could just retire and kind of do military work because there's, you know, as a contractor or whatever, you can always can kind of continue what you did. Pick up golf or something. <laughs> or, or that, right? Or work at the but in my case, I, I kind of, I wanted to do this uh, and, and I actually retired ahead of when I could have retired. I could have stayed a little bit longer in, in the service, but I, I felt like I, I would, you know, I'd met my goals. I'd served my country for a long time and I, and I wanted to do, pursue another passion. So if someone wanted to reach you um, to, to get coaching, if they're sitting there listening right now and they're in that, that zone that you're talking about, how would they be able to contact you? The easiest way is through my website, um, and I'll spell that out. It's www.mirealestate, mirealestate.us, US. And so there they'll find the rest of my information. They'll, they'll be able to plug it in my social media. And just happy to talk to anybody who's got some questions. And if I can help, I may not have all the answers, but if I, if I can help in any way, I'm, I'm very happy to do so. And if I can point people in the direction of others that have the answers, I'll do that as well. Wonderful. And that's great for, for new people that are trying to figure out what to do. What about people who are already in the multifamily space? Are you looking for any type of joint venture opportunities or should they contact you for any reason? Absolutely. So part of part of what I've made a conscious uh, effort to do is is partner with others. So like I mentioned before, this is a team sport. And so you always have to kind of look around and, and, and connect with others. Uh, and it's not a competition as much as it is uh, just being, you know, being in a group and being able to make decisions as part of a larger entity. So you can actually go after 
these multifamily units. I mean, it takes a significant, in many cases, significant, significant amount of money. And if you can join up with others, it's a lot easier to do. If somebody else is successful at finding the deals, then why am I going to hit my, you know, hit myself over the head over and over every day trying to look for them when someone's already doing that? Let me focus on the things that I can do to help that team uh, succeed. And and I, and that's part of what I've done is I reach out to people and I tell them, look, you've got a deal. Uh, let me know, and I'd be happy to be part of your team. This is what I can do for your team. Obviously, I've got some knowledge and I've got some capital to work with. And so, with those th those things, uh, one or the other or both, I'm able to you know talk to other you know, potential people out there or partners and kind of get to that next level. And that's kind of what I'm focusing on now. Yeah, it's all about knowing your strengths and weaknesses. You don't have to do everything like you said. Yes. You know what you're good at, and then that's your place on the team. Awesome. Very cool. So what is a word of advice or inspiration that you may have for someone who's um, new to real estate investing? So I would say the, the biggest thing is, in the, and it's kind of, a, kind of a model of mine, is invest where it makes sense. Sometimes, especially when you're, you know, you're put in a particular place because you have to work somewhere, you have to live somewhere, uh, you feel like those are your only options, and it's mm -hmm. not true. Take a look if you've really, if, if you decided this is something you want to do and it's one of the best ways to do it in a passive way. I mean, if, if you're busy, this is one of the better ways to, to invest in real estate is talk to others out there, connect with others, figure out where it is that it makes sense to invest and then connect with people that are investing there, that have people there. Mm -hmm. uh, and those two things, you know, they've got the, the boots on the ground, if you will, and you've got, you know, some assets that you can throw at that potential opportunity. And that's a great connection uh, to do. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, having to move because in my case, because it was a PCS move and, oh my God, I got to sell this house. It's a bad market. And I got to sell this house, even though we may not want to. And so, or, oh my God, I got, I'm an accidental landlord now because, you know, even though this is a, not the best area to live in, I, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of places where the military kind of puts itself where it may not be the best place or maybe your ideal place to live. And so if you buy there, you're kind of, you got to do something at that point. Well, if you've got some money and the idea was always to move somewhere else, then maybe the better way is to invest where it makes sense instead of just plopping your money there. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That is really great advice, Ray. Um, is there anything else that you want to say to the Investor Spotlight community? I would say this is an interesting time. Uh, just be, be calm. You have, to, you have to assess. You have to assess what's going on, uh, but be calm. And then when something comes up and it, it, looks, it looks like a great opportunity because, again, you've set some, some criteria, then, then go for it. Because at the end of the day, you know, people have to live somewhere, and this is the business that we're in. We're in the the, in, if we're in the in the needs of people, not in the wants of people, they will skip the store, they will skip their their latte at Starbucks, but they're gonna go live somewhere, you know. Right. And so, what a better place to invest in! And if we can help people along the way, some people are gonna have a harder time than others. And and, and part of what we have to do is help the people that need help, uh, and they really are trying to get ahead. But, the, the, you know, life's kind of, you know, hit them over the head. So that's the other beauty of this is you're, we're in a business that we can actually help people. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We definitely appreciate having you on the show. Everything has been very valuable.